Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Pompberry, and that means that you did not watch my last video, which I highly recommend you do so. I'm gonna link it right up here. It's a really, really important one to watch considering what's happening right now. And I'm doing this video as kind of a follow-up to my last one because unfortunately it did get demonetized. So the money that I was planning on donating from that video, it looks like that's not gonna happen because YouTube did deem the video non-advertiser friendly and so the ads are limited or none and if it is limited it means I'm making a little bit of money off of it so any money that I do make from it I will donate but I think it's probably like not even gonna be like 10 bucks so instead this video today I'm not gonna say or show or do anything that is against YouTube guidelines and I will be donating all the earnings from this video to causes that help the Black Lives Matter movement there are a few that I have already donated to like the ACLU and the Black Visions Collective. I do want to donate to more organizations and bailout funds, so that's what I'm going to be doing with the earnings from this video. And I'll only be featuring Black-owned beauty brands for this look. If you want to help raise money for the cause, but you're in a position where you can't donate right now, then there's an amazing video that I suggest you leaving on in the background multiple times a day, just playing over and over. And that video is by Zoe Amira, and I'm going to leave it linked down below. And she has a bunch of different ads playing throughout the video. It's a super long video and if you leave it playing in the background as you're doing your chores, whatever, you'll be helping to raise money for the cause. So I highly suggest playing that video over and over again. I'm going to leave it down in the comments. You can also play this video too on repeat without skipping the ads and all the revenue I make from the ads on this video will be donated. So with all that being said, I'm going to jump straight into it. I'm going to be talking about these black owned brands that I'm going to feature and also talking about other ones which I don't currently own but would love to. I've already done my face and eyebrows off camera because unfortunately I don't own any products from black owned brands that would allow me to do my face. The only complexion product that I do have is from Fenty. It's one of these matchsticks, but it's a little too dry to do my whole face. I mainly use this for concealing or for when I barely want to look like I have any makeup on. I'll just use a little bit of this under my eyes and it's great for that. But for my overall face, doesn't quite work. I have to start off this video by admitting that I don't own nearly enough products from black owned beauty brands. And that is something that I'm going to actively trying to improve upon in my collection. Some of my all time favorite brands are black owned like Pat McGrath, you guys all know, Danessa Myricks, I absolutely love her stuff. I love her work as a makeup artist. I love her work as a photographer. And it's my goal to own as much of her collection as I can. So far I only have two items. But anyway, today I'm going to be doing a kind of starry night sky look. I think it's gonna be glam, but it's gonna be a little bit edgy as well. So I'm actually gonna start off by finishing up my face. I always like to have my skin done before anything else. And I'm going in with the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks in the color Amber. This is the perfect color for contouring. You can see it's super, super cool toned. And I just like blending that out with my finger. And I'm just gonna keep applying that where I want to create definition. I don't mind applying this with a brush as well, especially for doing like more detailed contouring like around the nose and stuff. Anyway, it's really hard sitting here and not saying anything about what's happening right now. You can check out my last video for all my thoughts and opinions. Um, I really don't want to risk YouTube deeming this video non-advertiser friendly, which is a whole separate issue on its own. But yeah, I think today I'm going to be able to create something fun to look at for a good cause. Going to try to stop myself from just ranting about things. I am very vocal in my Instagram stories if you want updates on what's happening here in the United States regarding Black Lives Matter. I have been keeping my Instagram story super up to date with the best information for protesters that I can share. I feel like that's the most instant kind of platform that I can use other than Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter. I used to. I used to be addicted to Twitter and now I barely use it. So if you want like real time updates, day to day updates, I highly suggest checking out um, my Instagram stories. And please, if you haven't already, go follow some black activists right now because their voice matters way more than mine. Like my voice is, I shouldn't even be talking right now, honestly. But 
I decided to use my platform in whatever way I can to try to help um, because if I didn't, I would honestly feel like a piece of shit. I figure if I have this platform, why not use it to try to do something positive? I'm also gonna prep my lips using the Pat McGrath Star Wars R2D2 lip balm because I spent $40 on this bitch, so I'm gonna use it. Still cannot believe I spent that much money on a lip balm. But hey, when Pat McGrath and Star Wars collaborate, there's no way I'm not gonna buy it. I know I said this look was going to be Starry Sky inspired, but it's also going to be kind of inspired by this cockatoo because I've had this picture saved for so long and the color of the feathers and everything is just so gorgeous and it just looks like a starry night sky. So this is kind of what I'm going for with this look. And I'm going to be mainly using my Pat McGrath and Star Wars palette because I did do a video with this one and you guys said you wanted to see a blue look using this palette. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And these are the two blues that are in the palette, this really dark one and then this one that is quite, quite metallic. So I will be using these two. And I'm going to be starting off with the darkest one. I'm just going to start by packing that on my outer corner. Ooh, it looks almost black when it's on the eye. Damn, that darkened up quite a bit. So I might have to use more of the lighter one than I thought. Yeah, that looks quite, quite dark on me, but it's still pretty. It's still fine. I'm going to just dip into this lighter one and start applying that at the center and mixing both colors. Okay, that definitely looks a lot more blue. So I'm just gonna keep mixing those two, but concentrating the lighter one towards the inner portion of my eye and leaving the outer portion darker. Now I'm just gonna start blending this out and I just want it to be really, really diffused. So there are several black owned beauty brands that have been on my buy list. I have been dying to get some Oma Beauty stuff and I've heard a lot of good things about Juvia's Place. I've also heard some not so good things about Juvia's Place, mostly regarding the owner, but it's a whole other issue. But I don't personally buy a lot of makeup. Most of the makeup I have, I get in PR. And when I do buy makeup, it's stuff like this. Mostly Pat McGrath, I'm not gonna lie. But when I sat down to make this video, I did realize that there is a problem in my collection and there is a gap that needs to be addressed. And I do need to go out and buy more products. And if you guys have suggestions, then please leave them down below. I'm always looking to find awesome new brands and you guys know how much I love indie brands. Ah, eh, fuck, I just, I just, I done fucked up. Come on, buff, buff, buff. It's kind of coming off, but not really. I think I'm also gonna blend it a little bit into my brow here at the start. I want this to be kind of very high fashion. So always bringing the shadow into the brow. It's a very, kind of fashion thing. Not quite sure why, just is. And I think I'm also gonna go back with the darker blue and just pack that on the outer corner to just really intensify right there. Make sure it doesn't lose any of the depth. And I don't intend on just making this video as like a one-off thing and that's it. I do wanna incorporate more products on a regular basis that are from brands that are black owned. And speaking of brands in general, there's actually an awesome initiative that was created by Sharon, the founder of Oma Beauty. She started an Instagram page called Pull Up For Change and she's been challenging brands to pull up or shut up, basically asking brands to divulge the information about their staff how many black people do they have employed and how many in executive positions within those companies. And a lot of companies have been responding and being transparent about their figures, which is amazing. And they seem to be actually taking steps to create a positive change in the industry. A lot of brands haven't spoken up yet, so hopefully it's just a matter of time before they all do. But this was honestly an amazing initiative. And I do hope that it makes brands be more transparent about who they're hiring and that it does enact a positive change in the beauty industry. And they're also targeting fashion brands as well, not just those in the beauty industry. And as consumers, it's important to, I always talk about this, but vote with your wallet support brands that are actually making a change, support brands that are actually doing good because money talks. And that's the only way that you can enact change within the industry is if you stop buying from shitty companies. There's a reason I don't support 
a number of companies, and you probably know what those are. It's the power that we have in a capitalist society. We're at a point where there is so much makeup available to us that we do not need to spend our money buying things from shitty companies, companies that do not deserve our money, CEOs that do not deserve our money. That is how you, you at home can actively make a difference is by supporting companies that are actually doing good that don't have racist CEOs. That's why you'll never see me holding a star-shaped mirror here on this channel. You know what I mean? Because there just is no need. There is absolutely none. For my inner corner, I think I'm gonna go in with this super, super pale, cool tone gold. And I'm just going to pack that right there, kind of blending it out so that it really brightens up the inner corner. Also, if you want some suggestions on non-problematic, black-owned beauty brands, I love Jackie Ina. I love watching her, and she always suggests really, really good brands that I want to buy from soon, hopefully. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Magic Set and Seal, and I'm going to mix this with this bright, bright gold right here. This clear color fix is the base of all her color fixes. If you've seen it or if you've used it before, they are colors that set and they're on for good pretty much. So the clear one, it acts as a mixing medium. You can mix any sort of pigment in here or you can use it as a sealer and it's such a versatile product. All the color fixes are, you can use them as eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, lipstick, blush, anything you can think of. It's one of the most versatile products out there. And Danessa's line is pretty much entirely like that because she is a pro makeup artist. So all her products are very multifunctional and they're very well thought out. So her brand is one that I've been like slowly trying to buy little by little. And I hope to have the full collection one day, but I've just pumped a little bit on the back of my hand. And then I'm just going to lightly scrape this with my brush and I'm using a little liner brush. And then I'm just going to mix whatever I get off there in with the color fix. And it's going to create a liquid golden color. Oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> oh, that is so pretty. And I'm gonna use that to create little stars, just little dots of gold all around and varying their size. I was kind of thinking of blowing out the blue past my eyebrow and I might actually do that now that I see the gold on here. So let me just take a little bit of blue and go, oh, that was a lot. That wasn't a little bit. I'm just going to blend that out. Might have to go back in and redo my brows after this, but it's fine. There we go. I feel like that's more kind of queen of the night worthy. Okay, if anyone says that this looks like the black swan makeup, I will scream. That was not my intention. But now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back in with the gold, and now I feel like I can do a more complete kind of starry sky. I'm concentrating them here on this edge where the eyeshadow stops because I wanna go in with a golden highlighter. So I want these to kind of fade into the golden highlighter. Okay, so I decided to do them less like dots necessarily and more like random shapes. And you can see it mostly when the light hits it. So I'm digging this sort of shift where if I look forward, it just looks blue with some texture, but then bam, it's gold. So I'm digging this, I'm digging this. Next up, I'm gonna be going in with some glitter and this is by Glam Goth Beauty. It's the color Erotic. And I actually just bought some more glitter from them yesterday. They are donating all the proceeds from their Gemini glitter towards getting Brianna Taylor justice because she was a Gemini. Yesterday was her birthday. So I bought that glitter and a few other ones as well. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting the owner of Glam Goth Beauty at DragCon here in LA. And I got a couple of glitters from her then. And and the ones that I got work sort of as a shift depending on the color that you put them on top of. So this one is a kind of purplish blue, but when you put it on top of a blue, it tends more blue. If you put it on top of a purple, it tends more purple. So I'm gonna be using this along my bottom lash line just to give it a little extra something. But before I apply it, I just wanna go back in with the really dark blue and just make sure I really accentuate that lash line. Make sure it's really blue under there so that I don't get a purple shift with the glitter so that it leans more blue. Gone ahead and put on a glitter base and now I'm just going to tap that glitter right on top. 
The blue that I used is actually kind of teal. So this just kind of looks like a vibrant purple blue, but I think it gives a cool sort of detail to this look. I kind of want to add a little bit of that just to the very center of the eyelid just so there's a little pop of that blue up at the top as well. Also, I gotta note that I love the way that these glitters are packaged. They don't have that little thing with a bunch of different holes like a salt or pepper shaker. It's just one giant hole. That's what she said, which allows you to dispense a lot of glitter instead of having to constantly tap, tap, tap for it to come out. So I do love this packaging and then you can just seal it up so that it doesn't leak and put the cap on and it's great. Now for the blush, I'm going in with a tiny bit of Chili Mango Matchsticks from Fenty Beauty. I do wanna make myself look very golden, and this is orange with some gold running through it, so I think it'll work really well, but it is a really intense color, so I'm going to build it up very slowly just using my fingers. And orange always goes well with blue. They're complementary colors, so you know it's a combination that's always gonna work out. And the matchsticks are great if you have oily skin. They're kind of a cream to powder formula. They're not great if you have dry skin. I tend to have combination skin, sometimes with really, really dry, flaky patches. So whenever I do wear the matchsticks, I make sure to really moisturize beforehand and possibly use a facial oil as well. So what I usually say is that all makeup products can be used on any skin type. It's all about how you prep the skin. Some things are obviously better for oily skin, but that doesn't mean that dry skin people can't use it as well. You just have to prep your skin in a different way. Now I'm going to go in with the Pat McGrath Highlighter Trio, and this was one of the first products that I bought from her collection. It's not that expensive compared to her other products, and the finishes on these is incredible. I'm going to start with the gold one in the center and it's like a straight up yellow gold. See, it's just like straight up yellow, but it looks amazing, especially on darker skin tones. And it ties in with what I've got on the eyes. I really wanna concentrate it here where the dots kind of start trickling down. And I think I also wanna use the bronze just as like a blush topper. So I'm just going to apply that all over where I applied my blush and it'll help give it some shine, but it'll also give it some dimension as well because it is bronze and so it kind of helps to marry the contour and the blush together. But it is kind of muting the blush down a little bit, which I don't know if I love or hate. I don't know. I'm also gonna apply those highlighters to my chin kind of just mixing them both up. Nose and Cupid's bow, just where I would normally, but then I'm also applying the gold up here on my temple to kind of blend out that eyeshadow. You can see just how gold and crazy that shine is. I think I do want that bit of orange back. It kind of muted it too much, so I'm just popping that back on. You can even use it on a brush like this. Then to make myself extra shiny, extra dewy. I'm gonna go in with the Danessa Myricks Dew Wet Balm in the color Hot Water. And this product is just, mm, it is so yummy. It is a balm for your skin. And I'm just going to pat that right on top. It gives a beautiful kind of wet looking glow. I already look super shiny, so you don't notice it as much as if you applied this onto like bare skin. When you just wanna go for that kind of like dewy wet look, this product is perfect. But you can tell the difference between the sides with and without. Like this just adds a layer of texture and moisture and just mmm. It's just so good. And Danessa actually showed me this product herself at IMATS, I think it was. I bought this from her booth and I asked her like, what product do you love? And she pulled this out and I was like, yep, sold, yep. <laughs> So it's amazing for those looks where you just want to look healthy and glowy. I popped on a blue eyeliner for my waterline and now for mascara, I'm going in with the Shea Moisture Absolute Volumizing Mascara. I don't think I've ever used this before and I'm not sure how much makeup Shea Moisture has in their collection. I do use a lot of their hair products, like the leave-in conditioner I use every time I wash my hair is Shea Moisture, but their makeup is quite new to me, if I'm completely honest. And I haven't heard a 
lot of people talking about them, so if you have used it, please let me know your opinions below. If you do like a more liquid lengthening mascara, this won't be for you. This is very, very thick and volumizing for sure, and I'm just gonna load both my top and bottom lashes with this. Now for lips, I think I'm gonna do a little combo. I'm gonna use the Black Opal Color Splurge Liquid Matte Lipstick in the color Raisin Crush. I'm gonna use that to outline my lips. I'm going to apply it with a little lip brush so that I can be really precise with the outline of my lips. And one black-owned beauty brand that their lipsticks are amazing, but unfortunately I only have one color is Beauty Bakery, and I actually use this lipstick on my wedding day. These lipsticks do not move. You need to buy a special remover to take them off. They are insane. If you want something that's completely transfer proof, then you cannot sleep on this. I really want to buy more colors from them, but I'm kind of on a no buy for lipsticks because if you've seen my wall of lipsticks, you'll know that it's just, it's crazy. But when the time comes where I need to replenish my lipsticks, I will definitely be looking at Beauty Bakery. For that because I don't know what they put in that formula but it's fucking crazy. Once that's done I'm gonna go in with the Fenty Mademoiselle lipstick in the color Griselda and I'm gonna apply that in the center. And this is more red toned than the color I used on the outside that was more purple but I think these together will look really good. Oh that's pretty. Oh god. I haven't worn a strong dark lip in so long. Feels like it's been ages. This was always like my go-to lip color whenever I did my makeup for a while and I feel like it's been so long. Woo! It's bringing back memories. Oh that's pretty. That is that is very pretty. I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking I should add like rhinestones or something to this look. I don't know. I don't know. Something is telling me that it needs, it needs some bling, but I don't know if I have rhinestones. Hold on. Okay, so I found this like nail art decoration set and there's these little golden like studs here that I think I'm going to glue them on and there's some spikes as well. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to use, but I feel like this deserves a little little extra bling. So I'm just using some lash glue and I'm just going to place them here and there. But this is going to be a very tedious process, so I'm not going to make you guys suffer through it. So I will leave it to the magic of editing. I have blinged myself up. I put on some top lashes and now for the bottom lashes, I think I'm going to go for something quite a bit different. I'm going to try going in with this set from Elevation Lashes. This brand is owned by Danessa Myricks. If you're not new here on the channel, you know them already. I use the Freedom Number no. 9 lashes from Elevation every single goddamn time I do a cute look. I use them on my bottom lashes. Today I'm going to try using these ones because they're a little bit crazy. I bought them a long time ago, still haven't touched them. They look a little something like this. I thought since this look is so extreme, maybe let's try to go for a weird lash moment. What I love about Elevation is that they really do offer, look at that, look at how insane that is. But Elevation offers lashes that other brands totally do not. So I'm going to attempt to put these on off camera and I'll be back and I might actually add in some of the Freedom 9 lashes on the bottom as well to break up these lashes because they're going to look almost drawn on so I might add some other ones to break them up a little bit. Okay, so they are on and they are absolutely fabulous and I'm gonna take the freedom nine lashes and just put them in between these lashes it just makes the bottom lash line a little bit more dense and this is the finished look and while yes I did have fun with this look I did try to do something creative this video is not about the makeup it's not about me doing the makeup it's about raising money for a good cause also I didn't say this at the beginning but I think it should go without saying that black owned beauty brands are for everybody not just black people and you'd think that this would be a given but you would also think that black lives matter is a given but it isn't to everyone unfortunately and that's why we have to bring awareness to what's happening right now again if you haven't watched my last video please go watch it it's probably the most important video i've ever made what's going on right now is possibly the biggest civil rights movement in our history so stay informed stay active and continue demanding change because things cannot stay the way they are anyway i hope you like this look i really hope to showcase more black owned brands in the future in the meantime it feels really weird pushing out makeup content and I know that 
I just did. So I don't know what I'll be doing next week. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down below and please stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for letting the ads roll without skipping them so that we can earn more money to donate. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support me and I will see you next time. Bye. Just a quick side note, while I was taking the pictures for this look, I came across new information that I thought I should divulge because I did use a lot of Fenty products and while yes, the face of the brand is Rihanna, she's not the sole owner of the brand and so I don't think it can actually be called a black owned brand because it is owned by LVMH and they released the stats of how many black board members and executive committee members they have and that number is zero, unfortunately. And they own Sephora and a lot of other brands like Dior, Benefit. So I thought I should bring that up because Fenty is very much seen like a black brand because Rihanna is the face, but the reality is she's not the sole proprietor, which is very unfortunate. So that is a mistake on my part for featuring this brand in this video. I do apologize. I think I made the assumption like many people do that because Rihanna is the face of the brand, it's considered a black owned brand when in reality, it's not really. So I do apologize for that mistake, but that's it. Now you can actually see it with my good lens on the camera. Can you see more details? You probably can. I don't know. And with that, I'm signing off.